Okay, we're going to do the uh, word processing practice test here. Um, first thing I need to do is open up the declaration file. So let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to be flipping back and forth here between the instructions and the document. Okay, first thing is save it to my desktop tacking my first and last name on the end. Okay, so let's flip over and do file, save as, go to my desktop, and tack my name on the end. Okay, we can cross that one off. Um, set the margins to one inch on all four sides and Times New Roman in single space. Okay, so um, margins, one inch on all sides is called normal. Uh, let's do a control A to select the entire document and let's set it to Times New Romans on my recently used list here. And what's the line spacing to single space and left align. So control 1 will single space, control L will left align. Now we can go back over here and we can cross off these four things. Set the font size for the entire document to 10 points and move the five pink paragraphs to the beginning. Okay, I still got the whole thing selected here. Let's change it to 10 and let's go to the end and let's see, we got some pink paragraphs here. So, and we'll do a control X, cut them out, control home to go to the top of the document, and control V to paste them in again. And uh, so we've done those two items. Cross them off. Divide the document into two sections. Uh, find where it says begin section two here and do a next page section break. So let's do a control F and we're going to look for section 2 which is right here and to the left of that we want to, in, I'm sorry it's on the page layout and we want to do a next page section break. So now I'm in section 2 down here and up here I'm in section 1. So that takes care of this and the next instructions apply to section one only. Cover page using the conservative style. So we control home and we want to insert a cover page using the conservative style. And we're supposed to delete the company subtitle and abstract. Now if I actually click on the word company up here the whole thing turns gray and I can hit delete. If I click on subtitle and then click again, the whole thing turns a darker gray and I can hit delete. And there's an abstract down here at the bottom. I can do the same thing. Click once, click again, delete the whole thing. Okay. So we added a cover page and um, we deleted those parts. And we want to put today's date and we want to change the author to your name. So the author is already my name, you just have to go in here and type over it. Pick the date, let's go and pick today. And let's go back here and we can cross these two things out. So the first line indent for all paragraphs in section 1 to 0.25 inches. So let's go down here and let's just select, do a shift page down here to select everything up to the section break. And the first line indent should be a quarter of an inch. Okay. Set the spacing before each paragraph in section one to six points. While I've still got them selected, I can go to page layout here and spacing before. I want it to be six points. Okay, I can cross those two off. Uh, make the first three paragraphs, I'm sorry, not the first three, the third, fourth, and fifth paragraphs into a bulleted list, and if word indents it, move it back. So let's go up here, that would be in the pink area. Paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraphs 3, 4, and 5. Make them into a bulleted list. And Word did move them in for me, so I'm going to just grab the basement of the house here and drag everything back. And that takes care of this one. Let's uh, 
cross that out. Set the line spacing for paragraph one to double spaced and add a drop cap. Okay, so let's go to paragraph one. I'll do a control two here to make it double spaced. I want to add drop cap. That's on insert, drop cap, and we're supposed to use the dropped style. Okay. And because I've got that quarter line indent here, that also gets indented, and I think that actually looks a little funny. It doesn't say to do this in the instructions, but I'm just going to back it up to the left margin. And so we've done those two things. Cross them off. Uh, increase the margins by a half an inch in paragraph two and make it justified. So let's go to paragraph two. And I want to increase the margins by half an inch. Move that one in half an inch and move this one in half an inch. And I want it to be justified. So I'm going to do control J to justify. <coughs> Add your name to the right part of a section one header in 10 point Arial and page numbers to the center in the bot in the footer. Okay. So let's go up here, double click in the header. We've got a right tab stop over here. So if we hit tab twice, we'll get over there. And then just type your name. And we want that to be 10 point Arial. And then we want to go down to the footer down here, tab over to the center, and we want to go to our page numbers, current position, plain number, and we do have to drag our mouse over it and do a little bit of formatting here. We're going to make it 10 point Arial again. And let's do an alt tab, and we have taken care of those two. Cross them out. Change all nine occurrences of the word government or GOVT to government. So let's get back into our document here by double clicking in the body. Do a control H for find and replace. We want GOVT to be replaced with the word government, which is still here from the last time I was doing this, and do replace all. And we should get nine of them, and we do. Click on close. And we've done this one. <coughs> Add a citation to the last line of the first paragraph after the word separation. So here's the first paragraph. We're going to add a citation. That's under our references. Can add a new source. Didn't say what uh, type of source. Let's see what we've got here. Um, well, I'm not sure what that would be. Let's call it a report. Um, and the author goes last name. If we look down here, it tells us how to do the last name first. So it's going to be Jefferson Thomas. Title is the year is 1776. The city is. And click on OK. And that takes care of this one. Cross it out. Insert a bibliography at the end of section one. Choose the works cited type. So let's go to the end of section one here. And right there, we're going to, um, on our references, we want to, um, right here, insert a bibliography of the works cited type. And there we go. And go to the bibliography and insert a copyright symbol before the year 1776. So let's go down here and parenthesis C parenthesis will get turned into a copyright symbol. <coughs> okay, that takes care of that. Set the page orientation for, okay, we're all in section two now. Go, so go to section two, which is below the section break here. We want to change our page orientation. That's on the page layout. We want it to be landscape. In the blue text, set a right tab stop at the four inch mark and add a dot leader. So here's my blue text. There's already a tab character. I need to do a tab stop. And I want it to be a right tab stop at the four inch mark. You can close this now, I guess. Um, we also want a dot leader. The easy way, just double click on the tab here. Make sure you've got the four inch one selected. Oh, that's the only one we have at this point. And do a dot leader. Click on OK. And now we've got the dots. 
and we have done these three things and convert the green text into a two column table so let's select it first make sure you don't accidentally grab another line above or below or uh, word will get confused we want to insert a table we want to convert the text that's there into a table um, two columns is right click on OK and we want to make um, the width of everything two inches okay and um, set all the borders to three point red lines so let's go back here make sure we get the whole table selected and let's go to our borders here and we want uh, there's a couple ways to do this here um, but we do have to go and change it to red I think I said and I want three points I want all of them and it did select all of them, apply it to the table, click on OK and there we go, let's go back and make sure I did that right three point red lines, all of the borders uh, two inches wide, we've done all of that add word art with the text declaration of independence to the top of section 2 and the word art goes here so let's go insert word art, pick whatever you want and then type your text <clears throat> okay, and looks like I need to put a couple of paragraph marks in here uh, just to get the text that's behind it out of the way. And choose any style and color that you wish. Okay, done that. Put the picture of Thomas Jefferson in a text box. Make the text box the same size as the picture. Okay, and so we're going to go down here and we're going to insert a text box. We're going to draw our own text box. And that's about the same size. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut it out with a control X. Go over here and paste it back in with a control V. And it looks like I got the text box pretty close. So yeah, it's about as good as it's going to get, I think. So we'll leave it there. And the last thing is position it so it's centered below the table. So get your four headed arrow here and just kind of drag it. And we're going to have to eyeball this until the green dot gets on top of the red line there. And that's pretty close. And that's it. That's the practice test. Now, one thing that's not in the practice test that could very well be in the real test is uh, columns. So uh, you might want to go back and take a look at columns too. Okay, that's it.